as you may have heard, AI is having a very busy year. So we've got lots to talk about. Let's get started. This year, we've seen world-class boxing matches and legendary rivals face each other on the court with their legacies on the line. But the greatest battle of all has billions of dollars at stake, and it involves Microsoft and Google. Microsoft just released their AI Bing search engine, powered by the smartest AI on the planet, leaving Google to rush and put together their brightest minds with aims of delivering a crushing blow right back. Google has built an AI search engine that will add even more features than what Bing has to offer. And they've dubbed this new era Search Supercharged. And on this episode of AI Focus, we finally get into what Google's new AI search actually looks like and what it'll be able to do. So sit back, relax, and watch how your life is about to change. Google has been dominating in the search game for 25 years. AI has always been a part of search at Google, but now the company is forced to make AI the dominant feature. At the Google I.O. conference today, Google kicked off how the new generative AI search would work with an example. What's better for a family with kids under three and a dog, Bryce Canyon or Arches? In today's world, you would probably break this question down so that you could search and get each individual answer and then piece together the info for yourself. But AI search does it all for you. And here's what it actually looks like. Now, when you search, you get a full conversational answer of what you searched for. As you can see, the AI summary answers that both parks are kid friendly and then answers the questions about where the dogs can go. Then on the right, there are links included in the snapshot for further research. Instead of abandoning old Google systems, this new AI system actually builds on the decades old ranking systems so that everything is truly rooted in Google. But what's really unique is the incorporation of real people and entities into the answers of your search queries. This info can contain content from publishers, creators, businesses, or even regular people. Back to the park example, you can get recommendations from the National Park Service or learn from authentic first-hand accounts like this blog. According to Google, no matter how insightful AI can be, they're aware of the value people place on other people's opinions. This is true, I for one will Google something, then go straight to Reddit to hear from real people about their experiences on the topic. Check out this super specific example where a user wants to compare two lunch spots nearby that are good for big groups. Here Google makes a training plan for someone wanting to run a 10K by the end of the summer. A very specific and detailed query and boom, there it is. If you're enjoying this content and want to stay up to date on all the latest AI news and updates, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Now back to the video. Google is going for a smarter and simpler approach that will make daunting complex topics easier to digest. And this really shines when shopping on Google. Let's look at this example where a user searches for a good bike for a five mile commute with hills. In the new AI snapshot, you'll see important things to consider, like the type of motor and battery you'll need and the importance of a good suspension. Under that, you'll see the best products that fit those specs, complete with images, prices, descriptions, and reviews. This is all built on top of Google's huge shopping graph, the world's most comprehensive data set of over 35 billion listings, updated with 1.8 billion listings every hour. And at the top, you can see ads as usual. Google says they're still exploring new ways to integrate them in the future. After you scroll down some more, you'll see options to ask a follow-up question. Tapping any of these options will bring you into the new conversational mode. Google's starting to really show off here. Here, the user searches for an e-bike in red. And then instead of having to go back to the drawing board to input everything all over again, Google understands and puts everything in context with the prior information. Here's another follow-up question example where a woman is searching up what to wear in Miami. And the conversational mode stays on the screen as you scroll. Now say you want this bike and you click on it. All the retailers with the bike will be listed in this section, complete with prices. You can buy your bike and then it's off you go. Generative AI in Google also allows you to do things you never really thought about doing in search. In these examples, you could ask for ideas for a clever name for your cycling club, create a social post, or even ask to be quizzed on bicycle hand signals. 
Now check out this live demo where the presenter wanted to teach her daughter about whale songs. Special shout out to my three-year-old daughter who is obsessed with whales. I wanted to teach her about whale song. So let me go to the Google app and ask, why do whales like to sing? And so here I see a snapshot that organizes the web results and gets me to key things I, I want to know. So I can understand quickly that, oh, they, they sing for a lot of different reasons, like to communicate with other whales, but also to find food. Now, if I was actually with my daughter and not on stage in front of thousands of people, I'd be checking out some of these web results right now. They look pretty good. Now, I'm thinking she'd get a kick out of seeing one up close. So let me ask, can I see whales in California? And so the LLMs right now are working behind the scenes to generate my snapshot, distilling insights and perspectives from across the web. It looks like in Northern California, I can see humpbacks around this time of year. That's cool. Google says this is just the first look at how the company is approaching generative AI with search. To further improve, Google is launching a Search Labs program, or Search Generative Experience, where users can provide feedback. Users in the US can join the waitlist today by tapping the Labs icon in the latest edition of the Google app or Chrome desktop. So which impressed you more? Google's AI search or Bing? Let me know in the comments. I'm personally excited that Google is doing this because I didn't want to have to switch to Bing, to be honest. And I'm really impressed with what they've done in such a short time. But I need to see what improvements they've made to Bard. That video is coming up next. Stay tuned because there are a lot more Google AI videos coming to you from AI Focus. In the meantime, click that video on the screen. And thanks for watching.